So kind of break down for me sort of how Jim County became Jim County. Well, that's good and bad. I don't I don't pretend to be anywhere near all good, but I'll give you I'll give you a quick rundown. I I grew up in Des Moines near Roosevelt High School. Went to Dowling High School. It was the best four years of my life. I loved the old Dowling High School on the near north side. Made a huge number of friends. When I went over there, I thought, oh boy, I'm a west sider and all these north, east, and south siders are going to be really tough and kick my ass. And Did you go to Catholic schools and elementary school? Yeah, I went to St. Augustine's. Okay. Where a lot of, I've got 10 grandkids over there now. Yeah. Uh, but Dowling was wonderful. Uh, I got real active in this and that. Played sports, quarterback, point guard in basketball, president of my freshman, freshman, sophomore, junior class, president of student body, very active. So, you know, it was a great four years. I then went to Notre Dame where I didn't get active and I just recreated, hung out, didn't make a lot of friends because I wasn't uh, doing the right thing. Uh, but I, Stayed at Notre Dame for four years. I did graduate, not with any honors by any means. But uh, Patty, my wife, and I started dating freshman year in high school, age 14. So she's a huge part of my life. We've been together 61 years. Oh, good for you. Uh, and been married for 52 years. So Patty went to a different school. We broke up two or three times over that four-year college period, but then got married shortly thereafter. Went to uh, Iowa Law School. Somehow I did a really good job on the LSAT boards, even though I did a miserable job at law school. So I left law school uh, a year after I started law school. I think that was voluntary, but I'm not sure. And Patty and I got married and uh, started having kids. I had my tail between my legs because I had failed at law school. So I got into this business, small business in the, in the bond business. Uh, and uh, shortly thereafter, hooked up with my high school pal, Jim Hoke, who went to Roosevelt, I went to Dowling, but we were great friends. And he, brilliant guy, great academic guy, uh, uh, photographic memory. He loved his years at Yale University and Stanford University. He went to Stanford Law School, Yale Undergraduate School. And we started the cable TV company in 1970. We were 26 years old. And he intended to stay in the Allers Law Firm. I intended to stay in the municipal bond firm. And uh, we hired management to do whatever needed to be done. But shortly thereafter, as the cable business was spiraling downward, it was a bad business. What What is the landscape I mean, I think now everybody appreciates, like, I turn on the TV, I answer my phone, like, yeah. the internet's just magically there. Yeah, it's crazy. You know, <laughs> but all, what is that landscape well, in, like, 74, 75? What is the landscape of, of that? I mean, there's no cable in the ground at that point? No, there was nothing in the markets the size yeah. of Des Moines. And we really, when we began, we intended to only uh, secure the Des Moines cable franchise. And again, as I said, continue in our previous jobs. But the landscape was was four television channels, NBC, ABC, CBS, and Iowa Public Television. That was it. So we and that was through antenna. Well, like you got yeah. that on the antenna from the TV. Exactly, <laughs> rooftop antennas. The guy yeah. who invented antennas is an Iowan. Really? Yeah. Uh, Randy Weingard is the son of the inventor of antennas from Burlington, Iowa. He's a great friend of mine down in Arizona. And uh, we used to fight him because we, we went after a lot of cable franchises in Iowa. There was an odd law in Iowa which required us to have a referendum to approve whatever action the city council had taken. So every not every time, but most of the time we had a referendum, we would face opposition financed by the Weingard companies. Save free TV. Vote no on cable TV next Tuesday. And we voted for the opposite, obviously, or urged people to vote for the opposite. So that's how we got going in Iowa. 